Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this next lesson, 188, uh, we'll take a look at how to identify architectural characteristics uh, that are critical or important to your particular system. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday at my website at developertoarchitect.com slash lessons. In the last lesson, we took a look at architectural characteristics and saw various categories uh, that we can place these in to just help us gain a little bit better understanding of which ones I might need. But in this lesson, I want to take that one step further and ask that question. Even with categories, how do I know which one of these I need? And as a matter of fact, this is a very common question by most software architects. Well, it turns out that most architectural characteristics come from three different sources. And I want to show you those three sources. Uh, the first source of knowing which characteristics are important to us can also really come from the, the business domain itself, uh, our problem domain. Uh, for example, we're building a new stock trading system. Well, I don't need, given enough understanding, of course, of our domain, I don't need any other requirements to know that certainly low latency or performance is going to be key and also very high data integrity. And so these are two things the architecture is going to need to support. Well, it turns out a lot of them do end up showing up in requirements, but not as architectural characteristics, but as requirements. For example, we must support anywhere between 20 and 200,000 concurrent customers, which really describes the architectural characteristic of elasticity, uh, those peaks and valleys of users, whether expected or unexpected, and being able to react quick enough to those additional load, and, and that's elasticity. But it turns out, at least in my experience, that most architectural characteristics come from simply listening to the business. For example, we're aggressively expanding our business. And as an architect, that tells me that our systems, regardless of what that system is, will need to support scalability. So these are some of the areas in which we can extract architectural characteristics. But because that last one is so important, at least in my experiences, I want to show you some other aspects of that and also then how to get business stakeholders and our product teams to agree on these. Well, let me start by saying this is the language of the business. Business stakeholders, uh, we're aggressively expanding our business. Uh, user satisfaction is the most important thing for us. We have to have time to market, mergers, acquisitions. Uh, this is the language of the business, of our product owners, product stakeholders. But this is the language of architects. Architectural characteristics, um, illities of architecture, uh, system quality attributes, non-functional requirements, whatever you choose to name them, uh, this is our language. But a problem exists, everyone, in this lost in translation problem, because as the software architect is talking about one thing, uh, the business stakeholder is talking about something completely different. And this is where we don't intersect with our product teams. One of the skills of a software architect in trying to identify the important and critical architectural characteristics is to be able to use our brain as a translation engine so that as the business is saying one thing, we're understanding what they mean and we can translate that back to them. As a matter of fact, this is such an important skill when identifying characteristics, I want to focus on this. As a matter of fact, let's use a couple of examples. Let's say that user satisfaction is paramount, critical in our business. 
So we take that user satisfaction. Now I know what you're thinking and no, the answer is not user satisfaction ability. <laughs> I know as architects, we do have a habit of taking any word and adding the word illity to the end of it. <laughs> uh, but let's really use our translation engine to see what the architecture would really need to support. Because if we take user satisfaction, move that into our architectural brain, we translate that into characteristics, our language, that the architecture must support. Things like performance, agility, that ability to respond quickly to change. Certainly security, we don't, we don't want the, our customers' credit cards to get stolen or breached. They would not be very happy. Uh, availability of the systems and corresponding fault tolerance, faults do happen. Recoverability, testability, which reduces errors and bugs. These are all things that support user satisfaction. But there's a very critical thing I'm showing here. That a lot of times when the business says something, that they need. It usually translates into many architectural characteristics because, for example, performance alone would not give us user satisfaction. It's just one of the many ingredients for user satisfaction. Let me show you another very common one that we face from our product teams, and that is time to market. Uh, some people call this speed to market. How fast can we get our new features bug fixes and changes out to our user community because it's a highly competitive market and we have to get our changes out faster than our competition or we just will not survive. Well, time to market. We think about that as an architect. Use our translation engine, which is one of our superpowers, and it turns out that three key things emerge. Three key architecture characteristics, maintainability, testability, and deployability. All three of these need to be maximized architecturally in order to satisfy time to market. Now, in the last episode, uh, episode <laughs> in the last lesson, <laughs> 187, I talked about categories of architectural characteristics, and these are all about the process of making a change. Well, this is the first step in identifying architectural characteristics. But everyone, there's a follow-on step that's required. Now, I introduced this architecture characteristics worksheet way back in lesson 112, and this is available for anybody to download um, on my website under the resources uh, menu item. And you can download this in PowerPoint, Keynote, or, or PDF format. But this next step involves documenting, recording the ones that we, as an architect, think are critical. But now comes part two, because we take this document as a vehicle for collaboration between us as architects and also the product team, so that I can effectively explain and describe to that product team why I came up with these, where I came up with them, and what I translated. Now, no one's perfect, including myself, <laughs> and sometimes we misinterpret what's really important to the business. And that feedback comes back to us utilizing this artifact, this worksheet, as a vehicle for being able to relay our language to the product owner and have the product owner relay their language to us, and thereby not only getting buy-in of what architectural characteristics are important, but also validating those as well. So this has been Lesson 188, uh, continuing uh, with these architectural characteristics themes on identifying which characteristics are critical. And I hope that this helps you in kind of identifying your own. Uh, some good homework uh, for all of you after watching this video. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned in two more Mondays uh, for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.